I'm not trying to cheat the rules. I'm just making. Maybe sure. there's some kind of a stench as well with the decay. Oh. Ah. Oh. And I don't have prestigitation you... to push that away anymore. I'm sorry. You <laughs> did this to yourself. <laughs> if you want to push, I did. DM's gonna push back. No, no, no. I'm not pushing. I'm just. I'm I know. Just I know. Curious. You He's know. just testing. Test- yes, I'm testing the waters. So the stench isn't there yet. <laughs> but so as soon as but I piss that off, may not come, I will I stink. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Illyria makes her way back to the hut and waits a number of hours for her party members to come back to consciousness. And one by one, they awaken after the... Sun has dawned over the hill. Hmm. And she can still make out kind of the fading but still present bonfires all around as the party begins waking up. Do you all realize just how much time you waste just like laying there comatose? Oh. We're just following the rules, okay? Well, since I have disadvantage on charisma checks. Illyria, I was dreaming of you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like an... Oh, well, I've already got disadvantage. So might as well go for the worst case scenario no. kind of a thing. <laughs> I That's what it seemed it. like. I know her. I've known her long enough in the last two weeks to not do that. So I'm obviously not going to do that. Well, I mean, that's what Lothar just said. That is true. No, let's roll with it. Lothar said that. Just to see what she would say. She just looks at you and just just disgust. There's just disgust. It's it's all over her face. It's it's a look and So Lothar, though you, you may only be life. half elf, you can recognize this full elf giving you a look of complete disgust. Oh you look just like my grandfather. <laughs> Except before or after you told him you were gonna be a bard. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Uh, no, I was kicked out before I learned any music, so... I can say I blame them. (laughs) She's gonna come back and just hate me. (laughs) Don't worry, Shari hates you. While the rest of you were (laughs) sleeping, you know, just wasting time, I went out and did some reconnaissance. Were and... you able to get closer to the tower? Yes, I went into the tower. You went into the tower? Well, essentially. I looked how into were the you tower. Able... How were you able to get close enough? <laughs> Stupid question. <laughs> 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 and I assume you said stupid questions. <laughs> She's looking at it and goes, yes, yes, that was a stupid question. Hashtag just thing. I think what I more more so mean, how did you get into the tower and what did you see? Not how well, did I, you do it. Clearly you're sneaky. I, I simply climbed up the side of the tower, uh, avoided the guards, observed uh, more guards inside, some Azer, and some really, really big bats. These bats were where in the tower? I'll give you two guesses. <laughs> yes, they were in the very top. Well, I thought that everyone around here was saying that there was a guy that was at the very top who constantly came out onto a ledge. Was that the very top or is that more so in the middle of the tower? So they said he occasionally comes out. Yeah, not like all the time, but like he would come out onto a ledge. So I wasn't sure if that was top of the tower, middle of the tower. I don't I can't see the tower. (laughs) 
Because like, Zen will have to say where the ledge is. So I, I don't know. So Illyria did make her way up to this top ledge that the druids she overheard were talking about. And she didn't find this individual that they spoke of, but she did find this top ledge at the top of the tower. Okay. That that, She's, and that's where she found the bats inside. She made it to the. That's where the roofing supplies were and the okay. rope and all. That. Okay. Well, I scaled all the way to the top of the tower, and found repair supplies, and the giant bats. Uh, I did not see any people or a person. Uh, but I may have an idea of what the dwarves we're facing are. What do you mean the dwarves we are facing? These are druids. <laughs> yes, but as uh, Lothar pointed out last night, they seem to have some connection with the delvers. Back in Red Larch, and having seen one of the Azer here, I imagine there may be more like them back in Red Larch. Denizens of the Elemental Plane who were coming through and assisting these cultists. Did she know about any sort of Earth Elemental Dwarf similar to the Azer? Not that she can recall, no. Uh, the Azer seem to be kind of their own unique species, if you will. Okay. Have any of you ever seen Azer before? I don't know, Zen, have I? I don't know. <laughs> Both of you roll me an intelligence check. Intelligence and Mushi, or where history? And Mushi, where do you want to pass you? <laughs> I would say an intelligence check. No, Damn. we're not going to do that today. Could I roll a religion check? For Grabender, I think that would be an intelligence check as well, because as Illyria would know, these aren't necessarily we religious. Are the Azir right. aren't really dedicated to any kind of religion or the like. Right. So... Cassie has absolutely read about the Azer in one of her father's books. She knows that they are denizens of the elemental plane of fire and rare in this plane itself, but they have been known to kind of make their way through. And uh, Illyria sees kind of the, the recognition on Cassie's face and the confusion on everyone else's <laughs> and says, the Azer, they come from the elemental plane of fire. They have the appearance of dwarves, but they have skin of metal and, and the, their, their essence is a fire and it, it shows the their hair, their their beards, just they're almost made of fire. They were there was at least one of them inside the tower. So whatever these druids may be claiming, they seem to have made contact with the elemental plane. Hmm. You said you only saw one of these there? Yes, I only saw one. And I, what I of can't... the other people inside the tower? Were they just, a, just the regular people? Just human guards. I did not see anyone else. Whoever this head druid is, if he was not, if he's not disguising himself, may have been in a room I could not observe from the outside. 
tower itself is in quite a bit of disrepair. So it's, it's possible that there is something beneath the tower. There is smoke rising up through it as though it were a chimney. Giant chimney. There could easily be caves underneath it. As this conversation continues, the hut around the party just kind of dissipates as the eight hours of the spell. Sorry, guys. Premature <laughs> spell ending that happens. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, hello, sunlight. <laughs> okay. Um, I think we need to see what's in that tower one way or another. There may be a way for us to just to walk in we're deceptive enough. How do you propose to do that? I haven't quite thought that far. <laughs> I will say that I don't think I should be the one to speak. This face does not uh, deceive well anymore. I do not know what the best course of action this is. Grabender. <laughs> I don't know what the best course of action would be, but I do not think it is safe for us here. If we are to fight well, everyone here, then we need some advantage. If we are not going to fight them, perhaps it would be best for us to leave now. Bender, do you know if your god has any insight onto this situation? Uh, I can ask. And with that, he's going to rummage in his pack and bring out his uh, divination bones. All right. Or his, his polyhedra. His cursed luck dice. And if you will remind me what the spell is called. Uh, is it divination? I thought it was divination. Hang on. That's a third level ritual, right? No, this was like a first level spell. Oh. I should know that because I have access to Maybe second to level. Uh, augury. augury. There augury. we go. Augury. Uh, thank you. That is page two two fifteen and two sixteen. All right. All right, so Grabender pulls out these bone dice that he had made at the shrine in Van Dalen. And he kind of readies them. And what yep. would he like to ask as he yeah, rolls them? I gotta think of my good question. <laughs> what is your name? And <laughs> I'm, I'm casting this as a ritual. Right. So, And real quick for Ben, I'll ask, do, do you want me to whisper you the answer so that only Grabender would know? Or do you want me to just say it? Uh, I guess whisper it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I, mean, I, I have to interpret the runes and then I can just tell them what, the, what I see. Okay. It's I'm cool. Not, I don't want to read tune. your dice anyways. I'm not in tune with Bahamut, so I don't know. <laughs> I've been burned by too many gods. <laughs> Literally, look at my face. <laughs> <laughs> That's not burn marks, I can promise you that. <laughs> it's acid, it burns. And since I do not feel comfortable and, and safe 
here. I'm trying to kind of keep this hidden. Having this many people around who worship nature is really giving me the the creeps. Well, I'm going to sit on, if that's his worry, I'm going to try to sit at least to the elder camp and try to cover, you know, just cover what he's doing. Give him some, you know, cover. Uh, and, you know, so I guess this casting it as a, Casting it as a ritual is going to take me 10 minutes. So I'm going to right. sit there and pray over the, the dice. And I'm going to ask... Um, should we seek answers at the tower? And then I'm going to roll. The answer is yes. <laughs> Try again later. <laughs> Maybe next time. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Try again. Your answer is maybe. That's a whole lot of text going through. Holy crap! Yeah, I don't. I haven't gotten any any result back from my my check yet. So he's just waiting. Well, by typing up a small novel that uh, I need to know. Bahamut's got to type it up and then send it to his uh, writer, <laughs> and approver, and editor. Yeah. Get it proofread. And then his delivery man. <laughs> Get it published and there's, then sent. There's a whole process. <laughs> Gotta do it by the books, too. Okay. Uh, I mean, three different people are whispering me at this point in time. I have not. So. Thank you very much. <laughs> I haven't said anything. Wait, who else would be typing then? <laughs> I whispered him. Lucas, Mushi, and Ben. So. Wait, wait, wait. Lucas I... said he didn't say anything. So he's lying. I haven't said anything. That was like <laughs> two, five minutes ago I sent you that. That was like 30 seconds ago, guy. Okay. Uh, Maybe it was. I don't know. I'm drinking. <laughs> so There's no clips I've, around, right? I've been praying over the, the, the bones and I roll them out in front of me. And as I look at them, I, I look up and I just say, we should not go to that tower. I don't know what is it, what is in there or what, what could be lurking, but Bahamut is telling us this is not the course we need to take. Does your god tell us in which direction we should head? Uh, I have... I have asked my question. Uh, I can... I can try again. But if you... If I... If I try to ask too many questions, the... The signals become clouded. I know how that is. If I did not feed my rat cheese twice a day, well, I did not have access to his powers. I know how that is. It, it is not that I could not ask again, but each question, it, it's hard to explain. The, I mean, the, the symbols that come up are part of the message, but it's also there's there's a an essence that allows you to better interpret the runes as as you use it frequently. Those those feelings, those messages begin to clutter and it's it's harder to to understand the the true meaning of the runes that have been revealed. Understand the uh, your ability to read them diminishes the more you ask of your duty. Correct.
correct? Yes, it is. It is to be used for difficult situations, not for every question you may come across. All I know is that whether it is not today or not at all, the answers we seek are not in that tower. Well, Grabenda, I trust your judgment. Um, if that is the case, then I believe that at the very least, we should leave and maybe uh, follow a different path than one that we have currently walked because where we have come from it hasn't turned up any answers about this elemental evil on this plane, this area. I, th I have a feeling we need to travel elsewhere to get a firmer grasp on what we need to do. Where do you propose the... The only thought I have is that perhaps this time we attempted to explore the extent of the tunnels beneath Red Larch. Head into the uh, Delva's chambers? Well, to... Yeah. Remember yeah. that tunnel was caved in. Yes, but there must be other ways in. Oh, just out of character, which tunnel was caved in? Um, the tunnel itself wasn't caved in, but like the doorway to get um the one the old guy kept warning us not to go through. The one I was trying to go through. Right. Apparently, yeah. it was found with a major cave-in. The butcher was telling you that whenever him and his men mm -hmm. went through the tunnels, there was a kind of a cave-in roughly around the area that you, of that doorway that you were describing, whenever he found the numerous individuals of his own village right. slain. Okay, okay. Um. And... New Sheep oh. is going to talk. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. okay. I'm ready, guys. This is my um, boy. <laughs> are you listening? Do you hear me? Oh, um, I hear you indeed. <laughs> Damn it. Um, <laughs> she is going to look a little upset at the decision to leave this tower. However, she expresses that she agrees with Gabender's decision and she will follow him. However, instead of going back to the Delver Cave, I would like to suggest going to the, what was it called? The Feathergale Spire, the one with the bird people who saved us from the Liger thing. We have yet to discuss anything with them, and I believe they are the... The bees. manticore. Manticore. The same thing. <laughs> the same thing. Liger, Liger manticore, have wings? practically identical. Jeez. <laughs> the only difference is their wings. Oh, yeah, I was close. It's a completely different <laughs> mythical animal. Doesn't the manticore have a scorpion tail? Liger <laughs> are not mythical. They are to Napoleon Oh, my gosh. <laughs> They're real. chapstick. And they're huge. <laughs> God, they're but, just ridiculously large. Anyway. Yeah, so I think we should maybe try and go there and see if they have any answers for us. Because we have yet to speak with any of them, and they did save our lives. I have a and yes, let us travel there. I, I we have, need guidance. I have a theory that might sound. I have a theory we should solve this yes. fast. Da, 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 da. Thank you, Grimender. Um Sorry. <laughs> Flashing back to the Buffy musical. <laughs> what if 
this particular group of druids are uh, part of this how should I put it part of this trouble that the other druids sent us here to stop uh, it, it seems as it's going to interrupt and just say if we're leaving, perhaps we should discuss this somewhere else. I agree with that. Uh, we should be out of earshot of prying ears. I agree. Um, I agree with that. But I do think if we're leaving, we might as well just leave. <laughs> And then discuss coming back and maybe finding them or coming back for other decisions. <laughs> Either way, so move our group. In which direction should we go? Should we go back to Red Lodge or head to the Spire? The Spire well, is close. Let's go there. And it is on the way to Red Lodge, so if we reach a dead end, we can simply continue walking okay let's head to the spire and then we can discuss as we go yes sounds good all right who would like to lead the party out from the sacred moon hall <clears throat> i would like to be in the back the very last person <laughs> all right i'll go ahead and head first uh, since Illyria is... I'm sad. I'll be happy to lead out. Oh, then go ahead. I'll, I'll be right behind Grabender then. All right. So Mushi, as the last one out, the druid kind of pulls you aside, the elderly druid that you guys have kind of been talking to. He pulls you aside and asks you where you intend to go. Unfortunately, we are not yet sure where we plan on going. However... We will be figuring that out along the way. We appreciate your hospitality, and we hope to see you again. And he kind of leans into a deep bow. He says, I wish you the safest of travels in your journeys for you and your party. You as well. It was a pleasure meeting you, miss. And he said, she's puts out her hand and says, you can call me Miyushi. She trusts him more. Miss Miyushi, I am my home. Should you ever need of me, I am but a whispers away from the nearest shrubbery you find. And what, did he give me his name? Mayhoon. Mayhoon. All right. We have to find a shrubbery, guys. <laughs> I need a shrubbery. Shrubbery. So who is taking the lead? I was. All right. Bender. If you would like to roll me a d20, please. Uh-oh. Okay, I will roll you a d20, but only if everyone can tell me only because what happened in the middle of the song. I, did. I, I didn't only... listen to the whole song. I, I was going to listen to the I haven't seen Buffy yet. <laughs> I just, didn't watch. I just watched watch this all one. Of Angel, though. You watched all of Angel. You didn't see Buffy. Yep. What is wrong with you? Anyway, I, I just heard. The I was part more into Buffy. I, than I, I was more into Angel than I was into Buffy. <laughs> just, just watch it. It's only two minutes and sixteen seconds. Then I'll roll. <laughs> and then I'll roll. But do we have to tell you exactly what happens in the middle? Y you'll know the part I'm talking about. That's all right. So you go to the video and you hit it right in the middle, which is a minute nineteen. I've got a theory. It doesn't matter. She's got a theory, and it doesn't matter. I can't play too much of that, otherwise I can't with copyright claims. <laughs> Uh, get 
This isn't looking good for our Is this supposed to be members. is this meant as a very inspirational message that Grabender is singing to the party? <laughs> no, I'm not actually singing it to the party. But I'm just saying <laughs> it could be bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the party makes their way towards the southwestern direction uh, where they knew the spire was relative to their position before. And... Is that the spire at the north of the map? Yep. So I'm moving you guys. Oh, I was going to say, what is So that? you guys come... And as you continue your journey towards the spire, you come across what essentially looks similar to the Grand Canyon in appearance as this canyon lays out before you. So you have a number of options available to you. You can continue upon the side that you are here on the right side of the of the cavern of the canyon. You can continue on the left side, which looks like the Feather Gale Spire seems to be attached to, or you can proceed down the middle of this canyon. Do any of us see the spire? You've seen the spire for a number of hours as it's kind of crested over this... It's crested over the distance as you have... Continue to traverse. Continued to traverse as the hours go by, and the spire seems to pierce through the sky with its vibrant white color. As this white stone pierces into the blue sky, almost as if some sort of a white stone into the into the air. Okay, I'll uh, mention to Gabenda. Uh, maybe we should travel on the far side of this canyon. To get closer to the spire. Can can we see the bridge or anything or you can see everything that you can see on the map currently, I'll say. So okay. you can see the canyon kind of I'm assuming you guys are kinda of at the point where the canyon begins to split and divert onto the left and the right and with the as it goes down in the middle. Okay. Yeah. As long as I can see that there seems to be a, a a gap all the way around the tower, then yeah, we'll try to lead towards the side with the bridge. All right. Yes, I believe the most direct route would be advantageous in our current haste that we need to figure out what's going on. But this isn't the most direct route. We're going around so we can get to the bridge. Grabenda, do you right. feel like climbing a cliff? So a couple no, more hours go by, the most direct. and the party sees this Feathergale Spire rising from this pillar of rock high into the air. It's clearly the tallest point for miles around. It appears to be built of some sort of a white limestone embellished in marble, as the spire resembles a gleaming sword piercing the sky of all that's around it. The gatehouse is appears to be the closest to the party that has to come up on this side of the cavern, of, of the canyon, sorry. And it looks as though there is a drawbit, drawbridge apparent, but it is currently drawn up. And this looks to be the only point of entry apart from scaling the mound of rock that the tower itself is placed upon. Tall windows encompass the bottom level of this tower and absent only upon the gatehouse's side where the bridge would come down. And a circle of what appear to be open stalls ring the bottom layer of this spire just underneath these large windows. And to the, and to the east of this tower, a large canyon yawns through the hills. And one second, and I will move your tokens do we get to ride one of the birds <laughs> those things are huge there are a number of large vultures flying huge. throughout the air 
all about here. As the party makes their way towards the edge of this canyon, they see what is clearly a path leading to a to a kind of outlook of marble rock over the edge of this cliff side. What leading in the same direction of so that's the cliff side that you see in front of you. And no, but the the metal wood thing. That's there the looks to be thing. a silver bell on this side of the canyon. <sighs> Do the birds look familiar to what we saw in the pasture with the goat guy? The large vultures do appear to be ridden by small humanoid-like figurines as they kind of sweep to and fro all about. And they do resemble the individuals who you encountered earlier. I'll walk up and uh, I'll ring the bell. <laughs> all right. I will walk up with him so he's not alone up there. I appreciate that. Thanks, guys. He's not the prettiest person to talk to right now. <laughs> I can't say I'm better, but at Ouch. least I have a face. I just got dissed by the devil lady. That's great. <laughs> All right. So, Lothar, being the first to step up towards this bell, you can see a gap of roughly 20 feet separating this bridge of pure white marble mm -hmm. from the tower itself. And the closed drawbridge upon the opposite side, the space between the cliff's edge and the gatehouse drops what appears to be several hundred feet towards the bottom of the canyon. Mm -hmm. And near the ledge, this silver bell hangs from its wooden post. And you said you're going to ring the bell? Yep. A moment or two goes by, and nothing seems to happen. Okay, I'm going to use. <laughs> work. I've, I've got a thing for this. Um, <laughs> I think I do anyway. Uh, let's see. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to use uh, minor illusion here to amplify my voice. All right. And um, I'll say, we came to seek, uh, actually, <laughs> let's not say that. <laughs> we came to give our thanks for your assistance when we were helping a sheep herder. Um, see if we get any reply. You saved our lives. Good one. <laughs> and we are grateful for your assistance in our battle. All right. So a moment goes by, another moment, and then you can see what looks like a small opening appears in the opposite drawbridge. That was a convenient sound for that opening. <laughs> <laughs> and you see a woman's face appear through it. And she says, and who are you then? We are Claudius Vindicta. What she said, we are Gladius Vindicta. We are a group of travelers looking to seek good in the world. Well, is that so? What are you doing here? <laughs> you make me think of Monty Python. <laughs> that voice. Dee -dee -dee -dee. Um... um <laughs> we we are here to thank you, along with um, in hopes of making another alliance. What with do you, you mean by another alliance? Who are you allied with? We are allied with each other. However, we were looking for further help. We are new to this land. And you see the kind of little window slot slam shut. I'll, I'll, I'll yell out, Milady, we are allied with the innocents of the land. We are here to protect them 
and we were sent to defeat a great evil that is beseeching your country. And it opens once again. What evil are you talking about? Uh, um, honestly, I don't remember what the druid said, but... Uh, there is a prophecy. Uh, are you true? Uh, Do you really mean what you say? I we am. have no reason to I'm, lie. I, I'm going to kneel. And... <laughs> Yushi and Lothar both roll me pers persuasion. I have disadvantage. Or deception, your choice. I, I have the same to the each. So either persuasion or... Uh... What? I have a plus eight and I rolled a one? I have a 12. <laughs> All right. So you see the little opening once again slam shut. That is so... I am so mad right now. <laughs> I can't believe I rolled a one. Yeah, well, you know, tell that to Illyria. Yeah, and well. a moment later, you can hear what sounds like an audible clunk, 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 as a drawbridge slowly lowers across this chasm to the other side. I didn't do it, but you did it. I'm, I'm going to step in front, and I'm just going to get get down on my knees and... and uh traditional Japanese style. Just bow my head. I'm not going to do that. Alright, so Lothar is bowing <laughs> his head. That way they can't as see as any of my know. shit, alright? I'm trying to cover my face. <laughs> <laughs> what would the rest of the party like to do? Um, I will step forward. Um, did I... Sorry, did I miss anything? I know I've been gone like over an hour. So the party decided to come towards the Feathergale Spire, more or less kind of deciding to come at the Scarlet Moon Hall another day. I, I believe like within a 10 day. Okay. And so currently the party has kind of as if they were kind of traveling along the side of the Grand Canyon, they got to the edge of it and they saw they can go to the left, up above, or the right, up above, or down the middle, down below. They decided to go to the side where they see this tower kind of sticking out in the middle of the air through the sky. Okay. And this bridge has just been lowered after Lothar has kind of talked his way across. And the doors across the way of this tower open wide. And you can see a female human standing there in full plate armor with a couple of what appear to be kind of more or less commoners standing behind her. Not nearly garbed in the same kind of armor as her. But the doors are open, and she is kind of gesturing you. Like, Come across quickly, then, before anyone would follow you. And me, she listens and goes to here. <laughs> and looks behind her, like, "Come on, guys!" <laughs> yeah, Tell me. <laughs> Before I was muted, I said I would follow right behind her. <laughs> Stop <laughs> muting yourself. <laughs> well, I, I, sorry, I was playing the uh, the deaf mute bard for a second. So. <laughs> and the right. Mishi will enter. The Mishi, you come face to, face to face with this blonde woman in full plate male armor. And she is says so what what armor what evil if you will are have a lot of you been summoned to protect against and me and she will go on this spiel about the prophecy about the what the prophecy the whole all of the about the elemental people. evil yeah um, that you know 
All the people were predicted to be the bad people. The, the, the druid man gave us a task, and she wants to relay that yes, task to, that, the, that's, to the lady. I cannot, I cannot say it word for word. So. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, you know, we were sent here to try and defend these lands from this evil, um, and hopefully... We will be enough to stop it. We are only looking. You have helped us once in the past already, and we are in your debt. However, we would really like to have a companion or ally. And you can see a kind of confused look come across her face. Like, she has no idea what you're talking about. She says, oh, well, if you'd like, uh, Thurl will be in... um, any time now, uh, but if you'd like to make your way to the second floor, uh, we were just preparing a feast, uh, if you will. Feasts are good too. We will appreciate any hospitality you have to offer. Oh, it's it's for the ten year anniversary of the Feathergale Spire. Uh, uh, have you come seeking the aid of the Feathergale Society? You could say yes. that, yes. <laughs> oh, well, then, uh, come on, come in, come in, come in. And she's going to come in. At, at the very least, get off the drawbridge, please. <laughs> I'll be right behind you, she. I'm, I'm going to act as her bodyguard. I'm not going to speak another word. <laughs> <laughs> I got a bodyguard, guys. Yeah. <laughs> and you can see the kind of cloth clad individuals on either side of Mushi and Kazi are kind of giving the lot of you kind of questionable looks. Yes. And as you guys enter, Lothar and Illyria notice kind of hanging loosely on top of this room that everyone has entered, what appears to be a kind of pillar topped in a, in a bronze eagle design, looking as if it were ready to drop upon somebody entering who wouldn't have been welcome to kind of force them off the edge of this precipice that this tower is upon. Nifty. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say to the uh, to the it's a lady, right? The with the gray hair. The woman who opened the door is in fact a lady. The two yes. other individuals oh, 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 are men. Yes. I'm gonna speak to her and say What a lovely eagle you have up there. She kinda Didn't they just get through saying he wasn't gonna say anything? <laughs> I did, but I'm she looks a little far, and she kind of blushes a little bit, and she says, oh, "Sorry, sorry about that. Uh, it's for for people who uh, would try to force their way into the society, uh, not like you lot who chose otherwise. Uh, but this way, this way, this way uh, to the to the second story, then to the feast." And she. I know, walks forward and open. Ooh. 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 Oh my god, it's moving. She walks <laughs> forward, opens the door in front of her, and begins walking up the stairs. Up I the will stairs. follow, not too closely, but closely behind her. I'm going to. I don't know where she went, but I think I'm going the right way. I'm stuck. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. I am going up some stairs, but... How did you... Oh. If people would stop moving around... We <laughs> 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 killed us all because we didn't know to go upstairs. Well, you know, those two-dimensional stairs, they're, they're a challenge. <laughs> yeah, you know those things. We don't know which way is up and which way is down. Exactly. It's almost like there I is no. Know where I am. There I am. Oh, 
Mm. And Superbender. So you guys make it up to the second flight of stairs where she opens a pair of doors in front of you. And you can see a large table set out with a couple, a pair of armored knights seated at it. But in front of the armored knights are a plethora of a variety of foods from all over the known regions. Delicacies from here to water deep. Mm. And she says, oh, please just uh, make yourselves at home around the table. Uh, like I said, Thurl will be here, I suppose, momentarily. If you wouldn't mind waiting for him. Not a problem. We appreciate it. I'll go out and I'll, I'll pull Miyushi's seat out for her and I'll say, uh, why don't you sit here, my lady? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I'll sit down. <laughs> oh, Lord. Where, where, you didn't even, where are you pulling out the seat? You're still in the hallway. Your bender's going to give Lothar a pretty, like a strange look, like, what are you doing? <laughs> He's not going to say anything. He's just going to give you a look. And, and and I'll look him back in the eye, and I'll wink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> and I'm going to sit on the outside of her where she's sitting all right so as this happens the she kind of gestures towards the table and as you guys are kind of taking your seats she goes back into the double doors and closes them behind her and you can hear kind of distant footsteps as they make their way down the stairway And that's where we're going to end it for tonight. Oh, oh man. man. <laughs> oh, man. I you guys worried. have these heaps and mountains of food. <laughs> it could all be around. all a trap. <laughs> it's, it's a trap. all poison. Don't eat it. We don't as know. Well it could be like the labyrinth. Armor, two heavily armored individuals apparently opposite the table of the party. <laughs> mm. But, you know, we could take a bite and then be stuck here forever. <laughs> For, we don't know. What is it, Narnia? I say I've re I've read that happens sometimes. <laughs> or it could be Hades. Yeah, the, or it could be the labyrinth. What, what is it? Or... What is it? What do they call it in Percy Jackson? The it's uh... a truck. <laughs> sorry, that was from Star Wars. Sorry. The the <laughs> what is it? The layer of the lotus blossom. Yeah, those assholes. Lotus eaters. I haven't read those yeah, lotus books eaters. in so long. <laughs> well, that's, that's just a good old Greek myth about the lotus eaters. Yes, the lotus eaters. <laughs> oh, man. That was a good session. <sighs> oh. I still didn't get to... I... How long has it been since we killed anything? I just killed three things. Well, well besides you. Uh, I mean, now I'm got, that answer to that is weeks. now going to vary per party member. <laughs> I was so excited. I'm, I'm, I didn't realize they were good guys, but I'm very excited. I, that I that killed experience people. definitely goes towards the party. <laughs> but, <laughs> you guys, if you will, uh, I would ask that each of you state your character's highlight for this session, as well as what they hope to accomplish God. going okay. forward. Okay, uh, okay. Ben, I would like to start off with you just to kind of get you out of here. I'm cool. Yeah, it took a little man. bit longer than. Oh no, it's okay. Did I even do oh. No, they. <laughs> they you got they just Started me on this different schedule where I'm doing weekend coverage at work, mm. so I now work like Saturday through Wednesday. Oh, that's uh, weird. So yeah. It's very anyway. Weird. Uh, but it's not fun. Actually, it wasn't it, entirely different discussion. Uh, <laughs> I was say, you guys will get me talking about that. Gravender's favorite thing uh, was it was kind of fun to get to role play a, a bit more and you know, go stomping off mad because you know, there were these, like, they were harboring these evil things. Let's say that whole thing again. Uh, I got to in character go stomp off mad because you know these 
group of druids who I don't trust were harboring these evil creatures that attacked Mushi and wouldn't let us kill them, and that, that just did not sit well with me. So that was fun. Yeah. I, I love the way you played your eight intelligence this this session. It was great. <laughs> I, I'm I'm enjoying playing eight until it's actually it's kind of fun. I bet it sounds so. Much. I'm gonna run up the steepest part of the mountain. That's the that was dedication. That was dedication. <laughs> but at the same I time, like, he made it there like at the same time as the other people. So. He, did exactly. he did it at the same time I did. So. Oh. That's so funny. Hilaria's favorite part was definitely getting to sneak around the castle. Seriously though, I'm so jealous. I think that's the first time she used her spider climb ability. No, yeah. there From was her... one time. That yeah, she it... she tried to use it to run down and save a rom. Oh, that's right. No, the time that she threw the bomb into the castle and ran over the right. roof and exploded. That I was awesome. Oh. That that also was pretty awesome. I that see. Awesome. I miss all the cool things. That's, that's that was great. a long time ago. Yeah, I missed that one. That's great. Yeah, when uh, you guys nuked the castle. That was... <laughs> yeah, the we double grenade. Like, oh, Murdered everything in there. <laughs> Actually, I think... Was that before or after Droop died? It's before. That was before. That was before we made it to the town. Poor Droop. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and... Let's see. Things I'm looking forward to next session. Um, uh, There's definitely a bit of a mystery about, like... Where all these things are coming from, and how the hell we're gonna like start unraveling this knot? Seriously, I'm, I'm hoping we, get, we make some more progress on that. Maybe the spire people will help out. And yeah, that's about it. All right, thank you. And uh, Lucas. Oh 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 oh. Okay, so um, uh, things I'm proud about this session since I didn't actually hurt anybody except for myself <laughs> um well i'm proud about that but no i'm actually um the rp that we did this session was great as far as my character talking to everybody else that was that was awesome finally yeah. revealing himself yeah, yeah. yes i am the dark lord of the sith um <laughs> uh yeah so that was great and um uh Doing a uh, talking without having to do a uh, persuasion check was great um, because apparently I'm bad at that now. <laughs> um, and uh, for next session, um, I'm hoping someone can share my pain. Uh, I'm looking <laughs> forward to that. So uh, that's terrible. No, <laughs> well it is. Um, <laughs> No, I'm, I'm Are you looking... trying to send your curse onto someone else? Uh, you know, pass it around a little bit. You know, uh, I no. am not going to let you pull out any chairs for me. Anymore. Well, too late. Um, no. Yeah, if the charity metal in it is now rotted. Yeah. No. I, I can't hurt wood apparently. Uh, no.